Whether you just want to get the speedrun achievements in Hollow Knight, plan on becoming a speedrunner, or just want to try speedrunning and beating Hollow Knight in under an hour, then you want to watch this video as I'll be showing you the easiest yet really fast route to beat Hollow Knight as quick as possible in under an hour. Keep in mind that this is current patch, and it's not the usual any percent route, as we're not doing QGA in this run. The run I'm showing you is run by me, and is definitely not my best run, though it beats the game in 48 minutes. So keep that in mind when comparing the times to mine, as they don't have to be as fast, though want to be around that anyways. Anyways, let's just get straight into the route. Firstly, you'll need to try to go through King's Pass as quick as possible. There's a pretty easy Vengefly skip you can do here, but other than that, it doesn't matter much, and you should be out in just over a minute. In Dirtmouth, it's actually quicker to be constantly jumping, when the game starts to make you walk like this, as it's decently slow. But time saves like this doesn't really matter, though jumping like this is the most optimal. And in Crossroads, you'll want to head to the left immediately. Then, try to fall down this room without taking any damage. Spamming down Pogo is probably the best strategy. You want to go under Cornifar and head straight right to the Aspid Arena. Killing the first one is pretty easy, and if you learn the timing, you can do this spike to kill them in one hit. However, this literally isn't necessary and you can just kill them normally. So then take the top path here so you don't need to wait for the gomes, and head on through and up past the stag. We'll be buying this later so you don't need to worry about Geo for now. If you're low health, don't worry, you can just heal, however it is a bit of a time loss and any time saved is a W. The bosses later might make it a lot slower, so you just want to do everything as fast as possible. Now head through this door and head all the way to the left, False Knight. False Knight isn't too tricky and we're going to be skipping him. All you need to do is hit him when you can and go under him when he jumps. Though for speedrunning, you probably know how to do False Knight by now, so I don't need to explain it. As soon as he goes in the ground, you have time to heal twice without losing any time, so ideally you want to wait till now, but it really doesn't matter. And also make sure your healing doesn't get interrupted by these stupid balls. And as soon as he's up and starts slashing the ground, come to the left and break this wall here so we can skip the whole boss fight. Now all you have to do is head left and then up to Ancestral Mound. Grab Spirit and head through Mound as quickly as possible. Make sure you have full soul when falling to the boulder, so you can do 3 spirits and you only have to wait for one boulder to get the last hit. Now head through and make sure to sit on this bench here. This is vital and must be done, as we will need to save and quit back here later on, twice, in this run. Now the thing with this is you need to also make sure you don't grab any benches up till Horner, so if you do take damage, just make sure to heal. Now head left and back up the tall crossroads room to Green Path entrance. I suggest farming soul on your way up so you can kill the boulder here quicker, but it doesn't matter. Now head left through Green Path until you reach the Hornet Arena. However, there are a few skips you can do along the way. At this part, a fireball skip is usually done by speedrunners, however if you do this movement here, you can pogo off this squirt to get up pretty easily. Squirt skip is easier and it's not that much slower, however I will explain to do a fireball skip if you want to do it. All you need to do is full soul, ideally farm the enemies on the way here, however you can farm these guys like this if you need. When you have full soul, jump at the end of this platform to around this point, the peak of your jump. Turn around and use quick cast three times. This can be done with one, two, and three. The three is the easiest. This isn't an easy skip and takes a bit of practice, but you'll get the hang of it eventually. I tend to do the squid skip anyways, so I suggest just doing that. Now all you need to do is head a bit down, then left and up here to the Moss Knight. I suggest using two eventual spirits and getting the rest of the attacks off. Heal if you need. Now head right, up, and left across the Vengefly King. And now you have to kill him for Geo. Unless you absolutely refuse to save Zo, then you can kill the Moss Knights. But really, you only want 220 Geo by the end of this. Now head through to Hornet and make sure you beat her first try. The quicker the better, but it doesn't matter too long as long as you don't die. Hornet should be pretty easy to beat first try though. Also, can I just say how crazy this Hornet fight was? I'd gone down to 1 health but didn't heal, even though I could have lost the whole run if I died. Now you've collected Dash, save and quit back to the Ancestral Mounds bench. Now head left out of the area, down and left again through the lever door. Head towards the Aspid Arena, once inside it go through the bottom left exit and dash up here. Remember you have dash now so use it whenever you can to increase your speed. Now head through Fungal Waste and try to fall in the acid as little as possible. Once at the bottom head right, through this room, down through here, left, across past cloth, left to the end of this room and then down to the bottom left transition. Now you can either do E Pogo, which is performed like this. However, if you don't want to learn that, you can just go through the normal Mantra Safari route, then pull the sliver and head up and grab Claw. E Pogo does save quite a bit of time, and I suggest learning it. It's also very fun to learn, and I do this every time. However, you don't have to. 
Now we want to save and quit back to Ancestral Mound Bench again, which yes, means you can't have grabbed any benches from that bench to claw, but this shouldn't be too hard as there's barely any benches anyways. Anyways, now head back through Crossroads, make sure to not go through the False Knight area because it's locked, so you have to go back through the Aspid Arena route. Once you reach this point here, go up to the stag and buy it, you'll need this later. Now head back down and kill Grasmother as fast as you can. Go to Salubra and buy the best charm in the game, Shaman Stone, with your 220 Geo. You should still have 220 Geo by this point, as Grasmother gives you 50 Geo and you would have spent that on the stack, so we can use that to buy Shaman Stone. And then you want to equip it at the bench. Now go to Sly and save him for later. Go out of the house and take damage to these guys as we're now doing the Shade Skip. Also make sure to die to the left of this background object here, just to ensure your Shade spawns in the right position. When you spawn back at the Salubra bench, go over to your shade and lure it over and jump around here so it goes up. You probably want to jump about twice. Now we'll jump up this wall and then you can dash and pogo twice to get up here. You can wall jump here as well in case you don't quite make it. You ideally want to get this first try and it's a skip that might require some practice but it's not too hard. Now you're into Blue Lake, jump and dash through it like this until you get to this lever. Then go up into resting grounds. Now you can head straight to the right and grab Dream now, after doing the parkour. You don't need to memorise all the dash parts like speedrunners do unless you want to. At the time of recording I haven't even memorised this. Once Dream Nell is obtained, head right out of Sia and straight down resting grounds to the bottom. Then go left and head back down the lever door you entered. Now go to the right, avoiding these guys, and down the elevator, which will take you to the City of Tears east side. Now head through these enemies using Spirit if needed, then down here and go right just above the elevator. Here we'll be able to get the Wondrous Journal and also kill these guys and you should have got 50 Geo plus the Wondrous Journal just from this section here. Now head down into King Station and go straight to the left. Then go to this door here which has Gorgeous Husk inside and kill her. You could get the Relic in King Station if you think that's quicker than killing Gorgeous Husk, but the speedrunners kill Gorgeous Husk so I guess that's quicker, I'm not really sure. Now head right until you get to the lift to Watchers. Now you need to do a pogo skip here which means you can get to Watchers without needing Monoquins. I always found that I have to pogo later than I thought when doing the skip. I don't know if that will help. Now head straight up Watcher Spire and left grabbing the bench in case you die. Whoever beating Watcher's first try is ideal. Now go down here to the Great Husk Sentry and Flying Guy. Kill them, flick a sliver and scale up the now revealed right side. Head up here and left to the elevator. Once at the top, head left, up and then to this elevator to the arena. Make sure you hit the chandelier to pre-kill one Watcher and head into the fight. Shaman Stone helps so much as your fireball does lots of damage. This is probably the hardest part of the run. You may need to practice watches a lot before you get to it, but getting them first try saves a lot of time. Feel free to heal throughout the fight as well, and eventually you'll learn when to heal. I've gotten so good at this fight now that it's not a problem for me, though it is probably the hardest fight in the whole run. Now head up here onto this elevator to Lurian. Grab Lurian, go back down again, and this time I wouldn't use the elevator, but make sure you hit it on your way at the top, otherwise it'll be at the bottom and you won't be able to get down, or just take the elevator. Then you want to grab the Hallowness Seal and all the Geo from the Watcher's chest. Now head down Watcher Spire and to the Fountain, as Lem should now be here, as he spawns here after you get a Dreamer. Talk to him and keep heading left. Go through this massive room, up the elevator and across the platforms, grabbing this relic at the very top. Now head into the upper entrance of the building to the right, and go down and sell everything to Lem. I don't know how much shield you have at this point, but you need to make sure you have 2150. If you don't, you might just want to farm for Geo for a bit, but try to make it as quick as possible. Head all the way back through City to the right until getting to the King Station, where you can buy this and stag to Dirtmouth. And since we saved Sly earlier, his shop is now here, where you can enter and buy Loomfly Lantern. Now you need to make sure to sit on the Dirtmouth bench here, as we will save and quit back to it later. I actually didn't do this in this run, and ended up losing a minute because of it. I know that's not a big time, but it can add up, so just make sure to sit on this bench. Then stack back to Crossroads and head up through it to Crystal Peak's dark entrance. Crossroads is now infected, so watch out. You want to spend 50 Geo for the toll, and then head right until you get to this room, and keep heading right until this lantern. You want to head up and then left, as right requires a skip that I have done once, but... But I can't do it consistently, so I suggest going to the left. Unless you can learn it, but... Anyways, just keep going until you get here. I suggest going down and playing it safe so you don't die. Whoever going straight through is faster, though riskier. Now go up, ignoring the bench sign, and keep up until you finally get hit. Finally, we stop going up now. As you want to head to the right and then down here. Try to inventory drop if you can, by pressing inventory right as you go off the ledge, though it's not easy and it really doesn't matter. 
Now it's the Crystal Peaks parkour to C dash. This parkour is pretty simple, just try to do it as quickly as possible without taking any damage. I suggest not trying any speedrun skips or anything, I know there's a god cycle but it isn't needed as long as you don't take any damage. Or at least don't die. And once Crystal Heart is obtained, save and quit back to the Dirt Moth Bench and head straight down the well into Crossroads. Now you want to head left and down the Tool Room. This is infected so try to take as little damage as possible, as you might be taking a few damage, now we have to do another skip that is pretty tricky. Once you're at the bottom of the Tool Room, you want to keep going down past where Cornifer was and then to the left here. Then, go left through this room, you can crystal dash through it, though you would need to cancel it right here. There are a lot of parts where speedrunners crystal dash, however I'm not going to be mentioning that, as it's quite a tedious to do, and I don't actually know whether crystal dash at every part, you can do it if you want, if you think it will speed up time. And now, this next part requires acid skip. However, if you do this, it's a lot easier to set up. The skip is very hard, and I think the hardest part is probably the jump at the end, but with a bit of practice, you'll get the hang of this skip. You can look up tutorials if you think that'll help you get it. I don't exactly have much advice for this. I just did it loads until eventually I learned it. Now head straight all the way down Fog Canyon, and then left at the bottom exit. Now you want to quickly get through this room. Crystal dashing is risky with these big jellyfish, and now you are at Teacher's Archives. Now sit on the bench if you need to heal, and head down to the Umu fight. Ideally, you want a 5 cycle. 6 is okay, but it's quite slow. This spot is always safe for the random attack, and one of these are also always safe. The follow attack just requires fast movement. Once Umu is killed, head down here, see dash across, listen to the tube, listen to Quirrell, and then dream nail the tube for the second dreamer Monmon. -mon. Now head out of archives and straight to the right to Fog Canyon. Now here is where QGA is, so if you want to learn that and go Queen's Gardens route, go find another video, because in this video I'm going to be explaining the fungal deepness route which is a lot easier. Head straight down and then right through Queen's Station. Now go down here, down by Cornifer, to the right, down, then left, down, and then left again. Then go left from here, then here, and break this breakable wall. Then go to this point, then back, and drop down into Deep Nest. I'll just show the footage for this part as it will be hard to explain which way to go. Now you're at the hot spring. Now you can head through this room and in here. This is dark deepness, but we got lanterns so it's fine. For the first room, just head right. For the first room, just keep heading left and avoid the stalking devour. For the second room, you want to go left and then up and then left and then you want to do this platforming here, then up and then left. For the third room, go left, up, down, left, up, down, left, and now we're at beast den. I probably explained that horribly, but the more you do the route, the better you'll get it, and if you just want to beat it in under an hour, your movement doesn't have to be too precise. Now you want to kill this stalking devout here, head through the rest of Beast Den, avoiding the spiders as best as possible. Then jump over this one, and kill this last one, and then get Hera. Exit and buy the stag for 250 geo. You will kinda need to save up for 250 geo, so I suggest doing this while you're in beast den with the stalking devouts. And now you want to stag to dirt mouth. Now all you need to do is go into crossroads, crystal dash to the right, go to the hollow knight and beat him. I'm not going to be explaining any tips on how to beat him, there's probably videos for that, but now you've beat the hollow knight and you should have done it in under an hour. In this run I did it in 48 minutes, which isn't too bad, but I can definitely do better, especially with the QGA route as well. So that's speedrunning Hollow Knight. If you guys want to see me do the 112% run or true ending run, then let me know, I'll probably do one on true ending. 112% uh, will take a long time, I don't even know that one. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Also subscribe, yeah.